Hey guys, J.A. Broader Performance. Well, I'm going to try to do a quick one here. Okay, C6 came in for repair. Um, somebody had rebuilt this. A lot of money in it. Good parts and expensive clutches and all that stuff. Well, just shot to hell. I mean, just everything just burnt up in it. Couldn't even get the uh, forward and direct drum separated because the high gear clutch plates had just kind of yeah, it just gets so hot and warped and they get caught on the spline, so you have to press them apart. And uh, just a mess. No shortage of money into the unit, that's for sure. All the high dollar frictions and trinkets don't save you from a small mistake. So I'm going to go over what I found here. And I believe this is the problem. And of course, you know, when I get this back together and on the dyno and everything and I'm gonna know for sure if I'm right but I'm already pretty sure I'm right so if you look here this is a popular shift kit modification or valve body kit whatever you're supposed to call them I guess it just depends on who made it but this is a popular mod that they tell you to do and I'm gonna tell you not to do it I'm not highly against it, but I'm really not for it either. I don't do it. So anyways, here it is. So you see this little X. Let's go over here. So in the valve body, they tell you to drill a 55 to 63 thou hole through the petition under the X, which will connect the left and right cavities. Avoid drilling into valve bore. And, of course, I'd say most people probably go 63 thou hole at least, right? Bigger is always better. Well, <laughs> it's not. When you are supposed to drill the hole in this area and you misunderstand the directions and you drill the hole over here. Well, what happens when we do this? This passage here goes back into the suction circuit of the pump. So, if you drill it here, your pressure through that hole is going to come out. And, you know, it's a small hole. It's a big pump. Okay, fine. But you're also getting suction here. So, not only is there pressure pushing it out, you're getting the aid of suction on top of it. So, we're getting a lot of flow out of that little hole. And what that means is we're going to lose a lot of pressure. Uh, especially, you know, at low pump speeds or low engine RPM. Because the pump's really going to have to work hard to cover that up. Even though it's a small hole, like I said, you have the aid of suction. And it's just in the wrong spot. And it's going to really hurt it. So, that was the mistake I found there. Uh, and I have seen this before. And... You know, if you're somebody who's done this, well, don't feel bad. You're not the only person on the planet who's done it. I've, I've seen it several times, honestly. But um, in any case, so let's kind of go over what this is for. Um, you think, well, why do they want you to drill that hole? And if the shift kit wants that done, why is Jay telling me not to do it? Well, feel free to do it. It's really not going to do much. But here's the theory. I, I guess the thought is that at low RPM, you don't have a lot of oil going through the cooler and converter and lube circuit. Okay, so what you're doing there by drilling that hole, and I've yeah, I've got the book out again. So, what you're doing, if you look at this uh, checkered passage here, because this is a regulated, this is regulated oil. What this oil is, if you look, okay, it comes off the pressure regulator, and it goes in, here it is here, goes in, this is our torque converter, fills the torque converter. When the torque converter is full, the oil leaves comes through here. Here's the little drain back check valve that's in the stator. Okay. 
and then it comes out and goes to the real lube supply or cooler. It goes through the cooler and then once it goes through the cooler, it returns into and lubricates the majority of the gear train. Now also what we have coming through here, not as relevant in what we're talking about, but you have a little another little drain back in your stator. This is the front lubrication, okay? Doesn't feed nearly as much as the rear lube. So anyways, uh, kind of irrelevant, but what the theory is, is when you look at the pressure regulator valve, and it's, I guess I should have mocked this up so I can show you, but what happens is the engineer's theory is the priority is going to be to the clutch plates all the time. So the pump starts making pressure, the transmission wants to make sure the clutches have pressure, and they're satisfied. Well, in the aftermarket, we get this crazy idea that, well, we're not worried about the clutches being satisfied. That's going to be just fine. We want more oil flow through the cooler, especially when we're sitting at idle in a traffic light. I guess the theory is to, I don't know, get a little more oil flow through the system and keep it running a little cooler while you're stuck in traffic or something. I, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, in all honesty, this is unnecessary because even at low pump speeds, you're going to satisfy the clutches pretty quick. And as the, you see, as the pressure regulator opens, it opens first. You know, as it starts to open, once clutch pressure is satisfied, this will open and then start filling the torque converter and everything. But again, factory preference is... Fill and take care of clutches first, always priority, so we don't burn them up. If we slip the converter a little bit, who cares? If we slip the clutches, it is not going to last long slipping the clutches, but we can get away with slipping the converter a bit. Uh, that does cause heat build up and things, and that's not really ideal either. But uh, So their theory, let's get the clutches first. Okay. So this modification and these shift kits and valve body kits and things, by bypassing this so that we're always getting oil going through this, hmm, I just, you know, I dyno a lot of these units and I have a flow meter and a pressure gauge in the cooler circuit. I don't, and I don't do this mod. I, I've done it years ago. I used to do it. I used to think it had value, but once I started dynoing and having, you know, test data, I don't see you need it. Got plenty of oil flow sitting at idle. You know, I don't, I don't see an issue there. At least, you know, at least on this unit. A different unit could be different, but and they tell you to do this for a lot of a lot of units. Damn near every one I see, somebody's telling you to do this. But I don't find it necessary, at least according to the data that I get from the flow meter. And I don't know. I, I just wouldn't do it. Why take the chance of uh, doing what this builder did and uh, put it in the wrong spot? So anyways, that's just my opinion on that. And I just wanted to kind of show you that, and it's kind of a damn shame because, like I said, this unit had, you know, had all the money in the world in it, but one little sixteenth of an inch diameter hole ruined the whole job. And, and this, is, this is what I'm telling you, that transmissions are such a bastard. I mean, they just are not a forgiving creature. You know, the littlest thing, it's just... It, it won't work. It won't last. And very frustrating. Um, so that's about all I have to say about this. And uh, I thought maybe we'd have a little fun for a minute here. You know, I'm kind of always goofing on, you know, where I can't say shift kit because it's a trademark by who? Transgo. Yeah, well, I mean, you can say shift kit, but I can't refer to anything other than a Transgo product as a shift kit uh, because that is a violation of the trademark. And I kind of, I printed this off just as a goof, you know. 
So shift kit, here's a serial number registration number. Uh, you know, <laughs> so you can see this is a real trademark, but um, I like to pick on that. Sorry. And I know, you know, I, I, I have a little saying that anybody who doesn't respect intellectual property has none. Uh, so that's kind of just something I say because, you know, I, I actually do have some intellectual property, but I don't uh, get obsessed with, you know, yeah, you know, trademarking my little phrases and things. I think that's a little going a little too far. But here's the one I really laugh at. Check this out. That's hot. That is Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton likes to say that's hot. And she actually trademarked this. Uh, you know, look, it, I, it, bad job on the printing. But, you know, here's the, the filing numbers and things. And, <laughs> you know, it's this is an actual trademark. And she's got 39 of these. You know, very, very amusing. That's a... That gal's a piece of work, I'll tell you. Uh, but hey, I'm I'm sitting here talking about her. You know, I'm I'm not even a fan, but she's a marketing genius. You know, look at she's got all this men's and women's clothing, and so I guess I don't know. She's got a whole clothing line called That's Hot or something, and so it's trademarked for that reason. So I don't know. Maybe I'm sure I have zero female listeners, but. You know, I wonder if you know any of the gals out here, uh, you know, maybe wear some of this stuff. Well, it's got men's clothing too. Maybe, maybe some of you hot-looking guys wear some of this stuff. I don't know, but uh, just be careful. You can't say that's hot. So, um, you know, kind of amusing. Yeah, you can you can say that. You just can't put. I couldn't I couldn't uh, stamp that's hot on one of my transmissions. She could sue me, and she's got the money to do it too. So, yeah, that's uh. That's a gal that, you know, she could be cute if she didn't try to just overdo herself to the max. My God. Any of you ladies out there listening, which I'm sure there's none, but we like you just the way you came from the factory. You don't need big giant eyelashes and big fat lips and all this crazy stuff women are doing these days. We we like you the way you came. So, guys, go home and tell your wives that tonight. Don't do any this crazy stuff to be outrageous like Paris Hilton. So anyways, I just, just thought I'd have a little fun with you. Um, completely off topic. But anyways, that's all I got. That's just something. Stuff like this comes in this shop all the time. You know, it's, it's just little mistakes. And man, if you're the guy that made them, you probably feel like crap, you know, but don't feel bad. That is how this is. And believe me, I have made these kind of mistakes myself and have been burned by them and uh, happens to us all, you know, especially with time pressures and things like that. You know, I'm, I'm real good at forgetting to tighten bolts. That's, that's my specialty. Uh, nobody can beat me at that, but uh, that's why, you know, I stopped taking phone calls and things in the middle of builds and stuff like that. You know, I just, I can't do that anymore. I've got to concentrate. And this is why, you know, I can't, can't have these mistakes. So anyways, uh, hope you learned something from that. If, you know, if you have one of these shift kits or valve body kits or whatever, and they're wanting you to do this little deal here. Um, be real careful. I mean, you can go cross-eyed looking at all these passages and, you know, it's, it's a maze. You know, it really is. And very easy for your eye to jump over a section or maybe, you know, also you have variations in the castings and things over the years. So it may not look exactly like this photo and it'll trick you. Uh, it, it really can. So if you're going to do the mod, be real careful because... That little hole can make your life miserable. And, you know, but you'll learn. I promise you, you'll learn. So, okay. That's it. Thanks for watching.